Lord, thank you once again for this opportunity for us to come together and do the people's business. Uh, help us uh, find wisdom as we do that business and help us bring peace to this troubled world. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Next we have a roll call. Julia Hitz. Here. Tom Barden. Bill England. Here. Bill John Baker. Here. Jack Baker. Here. Harley Buzzard. Here. Bradley Cobb. Joe Crittenden. Here. Jody Fishenhoff. Here. Meredith Braley. Janelle Fulbright. Here. Chuck Hoskin Jr. Here. Tyna Glory Jordan. Present. Curtis Snell. Here. Chris Stuff. David Thornton. Kara Callen Watt. Oh, honey, we do have a quorum. Next is approval of the minutes from March 17th. Do I hear a motion to approve? I move to be approved. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? And we will move to reports. And first of all, we have from Career Services, Diane Kelly. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm sure you guys are probably tired of listening to me since I've been over here all afternoon. Just bear with me a few minutes. I have before you a legal size sheet of papers which has the map of the 14 county jurisdictional boundaries. Some of you all have asked for the last month or so for the uh, slot allocation. And uh, we have 477 monies, which is our uh, Department of Labor monies that's run through the Department of Interior. And then we also have our basic skills, which will be uh, allocated out to the adult education program for the summer. And then we have the stimulus money. And the stimulus money was what we were able to get just recently, uh, which is an add-on to our existing uh, 477 monies. The only difference is the age group, uh, the 477 is 14 to 21 years of age, and the stimulus is 16 to 24 years of age. And uh, then we also have the tribal funds. If you'll recall, there was 100 that was carried over for the remainder of the year, so that's a total of 250 additional slots. And that's what's been requested. That number could be skewed a little bit because the budget has gone forward as part of the budget package. It hasn't actually been presented to you. So that one there may be a little different, may be changed, but we've added the allocation so that you'll have an idea. These numbers are based on the number of applications. They took a percentage from the applications that were uh, submitted last year and the ones that have come in thus far, and this is the slot allocation that they've come up with. And you've got the, the numbers for the, the four areas and a total number up at the top by the county. I also have uh, some information that uh, was on the back of one of the national programs about our uh, Job Corps Policy Forum in Washington. This is a STAR award that our center got, and it's one of, uh, out of 122 Job Corps Centers, Talking Leaves, Cherokee Nation is listed on that. We received one of the, the Gold Star Awards for our community service effort. Uh, the award is over in my office if anybody wants to look at it. I brought it over there. I was going to bring it. I forgot to bring it over here. I've been over here, and I didn't go back to get it. But that's just to give you an idea that our... Uh, center has been on the list for the last probably eight or nine years and we're one of the centers that's been continuously on there and we're acknowledged for that. Are there any questions from my report? Ms. Callum Hawks. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so 477 and stimulus are both income based and then they have the very age groups. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And then basic skills is really adult ed summer work? No, basic skills is 477 and economic stimulus as well. But it's those students that are 14, 15, and 16 year olds that can't be placed in work sites. And they can go to the basic skills and participate half a day in the basic skills classes and be paid for the time that they're in basic skills. And they would actually be uh, working on any of their uh, reading games, math games, science games, and also they would participate in career development speakers, workshops, and field trips during the summer. Okay, and then the tribal funds, are the are they going to be 14 to 21 or 14 to 24? Or, and I guess they wouldn't be income-based? 14 to 24. 14 to 24 and not income-based. And they are based on those tables that we gave you in the policy that we presented several months ago because we had several uh, we had several tables, and we'll use those tables for the tribal funds by area, which means that 
like I said, somebody up here in Noatta County, your 26 may, uh, for the tribal funds, those 20, they may all be in table 3, 4, 5. And then you go down here to, say, Cherokee County or Adair County, and you may not get that many in those other tables. They all may qualify in tables 1 or 2. Okay. Thank you. And I remember recall those tables. Those were great. So tell me again, I think you kind of answered this, but I didn't grasp what you said. So um, how did you apportion? How was that determined? Is that based on? We looked, at the per, we looked at the percentage of applications that were received from those areas last year, and we looked at the number of applications that have already been turned in, and those were the numbers that the uh, uh, staff came up with. Uh, Larry met with his counselors, some of his counselors, and that came up with the numbers based on that. If, one more question, if you don't mind, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. Um, so when will the news release hit on this uh, for applications? Applications, have are, they, there has been already some news releases go out. I don't know that they went out in all the papers, but I do know that there's been flyers. There's been contact made at some of the schools. Uh, the counselors have all been out visiting some of the schools. I don't know exactly where all they were sent. The, the listing that our public relations office sends out, but there will be some more going out. We hope to get some more flyers. Our flyers went out, I think, about three weeks ago. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So a hundred thousand dollar carryover, and you had an increase of funding this year. Do you anticipate spending all the dollars this year? Then, <laughs> yes, we do. And then, uh, with the competitive grants coming out on stimulus, are you applying for some of those dollars too? Well, the stimulus we've already we've already been allocated what we're going to get in stimulus. We got that but about a month ago. But there's some more competitive stimulus dollars that are going to be available. Are you going to be looking to get some more of those? Though? We are. We are working on that right now. If you feel if we get that funded, we'll be able to okay. go in and apply for that. that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. And we're also working on the hosta dollars as well. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We have the executive director's report from Dr. Morton. <coughs> Madam Chair. You have the reports from the individual units within Education Services, uh, and I'd be happy to try to respond to any questions. Of course, uh, we will have reports, individual reports, from everyone with the exception of uh, Verna from Head Start. Verna is attending a leadership conference in uh, Tulsa today, will not uh, be present to uh, bring you up to date just uh, just briefly um, <coughs> the uh, immersion students attended the uh, state contest sponsored uh, by the University of Oklahoma and did quite well with several firsts, several seconds and uh, the contest was a much larger contest this year than ever before so uh, everything worked for us there. We are in the preliminary stages of entering into an agreement with uh, Two public schools who desire to add immersion <coughs> to their regular curriculum next year, full time immersion at two schools, one with the possibility of uh, two classes even. So uh, everything is, uh, is going quite well there. Um, one thing that I do have for you that I thought you might like to have would be the uh, List of uh, schools that were represented at our uh, leadership summit, leadership education summit, uh, held last week, and also the amount of, of funds that those schools received. Um, so I thought you might like to have that for your for your records and to see how your schools uh, participate. Mr. Buzzer. Yes, uh, Dr. Martin, um, these schools that you're going to be helping with on the immersion, mm -hmm. uh, what kind of help are you talking about? Are you talking financially furnishing teachers? Or do you know the answers to those? All, all of the above, uh, okay. really. Now, we have one school that has made a proposal to us to um, provide a full-time teacher mm -hmm. who is fluent 
in reading, writing, speaking Cherokee language. <laughs> and uh, that program would cost us uh, approximately $7,000, which of course is uh, a very good deal for us. Sure. The other one, the other school, which is Marietta School in Adair County, um, is building a new building. And uh, they're working with us to design that building so that it would be, it would better accommodate the uh, immersion. And in that instance, they're not asking for any construction money or anything else. They'll probably be asking for half of the teacher's salary. And then follow up on that is, what age group are we looking at? When we start We're looking at starting with, with three and four year olds. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hoskins. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mr. Martin, um, you and I exchanged some correspondence recently on the piece of legislation before the state legislature about charter schools. I wonder if you could just <coughs> brief the committee on that legislation. You may have done that before, but uh, probably as well. The, uh, the latest change on that bit of legislation uh, pretty well excludes us because uh, it passed the Senate and then went to the House and, and, and asked out the committee of the, of the House with the House's recommendation, House's version, which uh, will probably limit the location of a charter school sponsored by a tribe to a district that has at least 5,000 students, which would really not help us as far as some of our rural schools that are having trouble. So that one's probably out of the picture unless we, um, well, I really can't think of a situation where it would be to our advantage under that legislation. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Watts? Thank you, Madam Chair. I have some questions, some logistical questions on the immersion school. Um, so, at how long will they go in the immersion school before they enter Sequoia? What's the plan right now? Through sixth grade. Through sixth grade. So we'll have seventh and eighth starting at Sequoia. We'll have, have elective classes in seventh grade and eighth grade at Sequoia, plus elective classes in 9, 10, 11, 12, and we'll follow them all the way through. Okay, so what's the admissions policy at Sequoia? Is it federally recognized tribal citizens? Federally recognized tribal citizens or uh, children of employees of the tribe. Okay. Um, who who oversees like if there what's the chain of command if parents have concerns what's the chain of command for them at immersion to go through if they have concerns either about the curriculum or about a teacher or any of that kind of stuff what's what's the procedure that they follow to contact personnel that are at the Cherokee Nation. Maybe uh, Becky uh, Drywater, then Samantha Ben Duke, then uh, Rita Bunch, and then myself. Okay, so Corey doesn't have any responsibility as principal. He does have, but but we're doing a, doing a phase-in program with Corey. Okay. So as far as the curriculum, he has not been involved with the curriculum since day one. So. Uh, as uh, next year, he would probably be uh, in that. Well, definitely would be in that loop. That's what it's for. I can understand that's a lot of responsibility. So it's really, if if they don't feel like they're comfortable going to the staff at the immersion program, then they would go to read that badge. And then, which would ultimately be taken. Right. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Are there other questions? <coughs> I, I have one. Just, just uh, Dr. Martin out about them going to Sequoia. That's not policy. That's law, I guess. Right? As far as probably federally, probably it's, it's law as far as as far as federally recognized. Not necessarily. It's it's law as far as CDIB. Yeah, federally okay. recognized. And the um, we have made a provision at Sequoia for children of. Teachers at uh, at Sequoia. Right. Thank you. And this would, uh, as far as the uh, current uh, status of the immersion program, uh, when it came <coughs> high school time, or when it actually came seventh and eighth grade time, 
because you see the immersion school will gradually become a part of Sequoia so that we can be accredited under the umbrella of Sequoia. So the vast majority of the students that we currently have in the immersion program would be eligible for uh, uh, Sequoia, with the exception of probably four or five students. Thank you. Ms. Watts? Thank you. So one more question. I'm, okay. I apologize. So um, on a, <coughs> you said something, and it triggered another thought. Um, <laughs> um, on it, oh, I know what it was, accreditation. So I understand, you know, and I was hoping for coming to you for statement of fact. <laughs> mm -hmm. What's the intention behind state accreditation? So I understand the umbrella deal, that's a good deal. Mm -hmm. uh, but the transition for the English mm -hmm. component, even within the immersion program, what is the, what are the plans, what's being communicated to the parents, what's, the, what's happening with English? As far as English? Yes. English is introduced in the, the last half of the third grade. And then the fourth grade will be about half and half. Because, you see, we're getting ready for fifth grade tests, which will right. be in English. And then sixth grade uh, will be, again, about half and half. Then when they get into the seventh grade, then they'll just have class of Turkey. One more question. So I always understood because we were supposed to be, I always understood we were modeled after the Hawaiian program. Mm -hmm. So the big draw on the Hawaiian program, I always thought that the success factor was the commitment of the parents. Mm -hmm. So do we or do we not have those parents commit to learning a certain amount of Cherokee and speaking Cherokee at home or some, I thought that was the successful we, part. We encourage that. We do not require. Okay. But Thank definitely you. encourage. Thank you. Now, in spite of the fact that very few of the students come from homes where Cherokee is, quite frankly, ever spoken, um, all of the students are fluent. So we proved our point that you can, in fact, if you catch the students early enough, you can have fluent speakers by third grade. And by fluent, I'm talking about reading, writing, speaking. When they go to our uh, uh, speakers bureau of persons who speak the Cherokee language, uh, it's so amazing to, <coughs> to watch that interaction. They never have to search for words. They'll, they'll engage uh, an, an elder in conversation and just talk away. It's, it's amazing. Encourage encourage all of you. Uh, the uh, Read is it second Thursday? Yes. Second Thursday of, of each month at about 12.30, people come in from all over the Cherokee Nation, usually about 50, 75, and they have lunch, and then those of us who do not speak the language fade out of the way, and they talk all afternoon. And uh, we bring the little kids in to <coughs> talk with them, and that's the highlight of their day is when the little kids come in. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Thompson is not here, so Dr. Butler Allen, <laughs> J-O-M would be next. How's everyone? We have my report on the four years, and I'm here to answer any questions you might have. Any questions? No? I've got one question. <laughs> the uh, community that doesn't have JOM within the school system, are we sending the word out, or maybe it's not your question to answer on uh, the youth employment that Diane Keller was reporting a while ago, because I think that's what we're going to a lot of our youth, especially in the youth. The youth is, uh, for instance, Jay is not in the school system out there, and I'm concerned if the, if the message is really getting out. Do you put that out, or I know we don't. Know, the go out. But yeah. usually, programs ask for contact, superintendent and J1 contact names and 
and uh, addresses, and they disseminate out that way. But we don't personally. Right, I'll, I'll yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I, but, I just yeah. need to check and see that my kids, if they're getting a notification, but. It's a little bit different, you know, when it's in the school system. It's pretty easy to get the information out. And when it's not, you know, I'm just not sure what's happening. There. Correct. And we have we have about six or seven cases like that, you know, community programs. And Jay yeah. happens to be the only incorporated program. So. I'll, uh, I'll check with her. I'll just okay, with yeah, her. because um, Thank you. she's good at collecting information and, it, you know, and passing it on okay. to the students. So. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And we have Sequoia High School, Ms. Stanley. <coughs> Good afternoon. Do you have my report? Are there any questions that I can answer for Sequoia School? Yes, I have one question. Okay. Tina, can you tell me the percentage <coughs> of uh, instructors that are Cherokee or of Native descent that are close to? You know what, we haven't done it fairly recently. I could do one, I'd be happy to do one. The last time we did one, it was about 92%. Mm -hmm. I'll be happy to do another one. I'll have it for you for the next meeting. Good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Baker. Yes. How many graduating seniors should be this year? Should have about 68. Okay. It's going to be down. So probably one six of them are Gates when they need a scholarship. Yeah. Right now we have 12 finalists, so we're excited about Hopefully those will all make it. They'll have the last hoop to jump through here at the end. Because is it that an extremely high percentage for? It's a very high percentage. Year. Last year we had eight, and we tied with the highest. There were three schools that had eight in the nation, so we were one of the top three, uh, or we we tied with those with eight. So we're excited about 12 finalists, and hopefully they'll all make it. And we got a lot of other scholarships that are starting to come in now as well. Congratulations on that. Well, thank you. We're excited about it. Mr. Garvin. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, we're having a little trouble with our letter getting it out to school, but it's on the way, so. Okay. <laughs> I hadn't seen it yet, but I wasn't uh, saying anything. Todd, did you <laughs> Yes, as a matter of fact, I was just talking to Dr. Morton. Uh, you know, we're uh, uh, going to draft a, uh, a letter of congratulations to Sequoia High School. You know, we, we often hear about the successes Sequoia has on the athletic field, but it's equally, if not more important, to tout the uh, the uh, successes that they uh, had in the academic hey, arena. Man. And so we're going to do that. And I just talked about more, uh, I want to be able to list all the uh, uh, Bill Gates scholarships, uh, winners, et cetera, and, and other major scholarships. Yeah, so we'll get those all into a, uh, you know, a, a nice form, and uh, we will have that that letter shortly. I appreciate uh, that. Also, CC uh, Cherokee Phoenix. So. <laughs> we will make it a four on Thursday. Will the kids be in a letter themselves? It just depends on how, if you would want to, I would like to list them if we could. I would like to do yeah. that. I think that would be, because that, that's, a, that's a hard that's process. Very, it's yeah. a very time-consuming process, and I know they'd appreciate and it. Where do we stand nationally with Gates on last year? Last year we were, when we tied for the top school in the nation. So. Yeah. In the nation. Very and, and, uh, you know, yeah, we, 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 like, we often hear about the academic successes, but we really need uh, the, <laughs> time the, the, the academic success. We, we hear too much about the on the way. We're working on it. I'll let them know. <laughs> Dan, if you'll notice under our, the accomplishments that we mentioned, Augusta Smith, who is our college prep teacher, and that's where those uh, applications spawn from. She's also our libra librarian, but she was recently selected as the Class Noble Educator of Distinction by the National Society of High School Scholars, which was a Gates scholar from last year that, <coughs> even though she's graduated, appreciated what Gus did to help um, those Gates Millennium Scholars and took it upon herself to nominate and submit for her and she did receive that award. So that's a pretty prestigious honor, especially coming for, uh, yeah, coming from. And we did, I mentioned there were some other scholarships that are out there. Jamie Bagnon has notified that she's a Dell Scholar. So she'll receive $20,000 a year, which is 5,000 per year. So we're excited about that. We're getting notification. Uh, on a daily basis now, of kids that are receiving scholarships, so we're very excited about that. Mr. Buzzard. And, and you just answered what I was going to ask, and I'd like to have an update on, on your Gates scholarship people. But 
I'm sure the others too. It would be interesting. We will. I'll get you a list as they come in. And again, those will, those are up until graduation and actually in the first of summer we'll still be receiving notification, but we will get a list of those too. Yeah, the, the date on the tracking of those students too. Yeah, and those, those Gates scholarship value has gone up considerably. What's 100,000? What is that? It's beyond 100,000 because now they're following 100% through their PhD, so there's a, there's a higher estimation on the value yeah, of that scholarship. Yeah, Originally it was 100,000. Mr. Baker. Yes. In addition to the letter, I think we should have a regular resolution from the council to recognize the tribal council meeting. That'd be nice. Very nice. I appreciate that. I'll second the motion. <coughs> Mr. Darcy. I asked about the Gates Scholarship. Can they go to any school? Any board? school. <coughs> that include Harvard and yes. all the that's why we're pushing. In fact, we have a, a Gates Scholar that's in, at Dartmouth, which is another Ivy University. So, very excited about it. In fact, just to, to recap on the accreditation issue that was brought up earlier, we are continuing to meet with our regional accreditation officer and the State Department to try to move along to make sure that our immersion is in line and ready to fall under our accreditation. Are there other questions? Okay, thank, thank you very you much. So much. And last, we have Dr. Sly from the Cultural Resources Center. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you have my report. Do we have any questions? Ms. Watts? <laughs> thank you. Um, I had asked uh, Dr. Sly because there was a request from a law enforcement uh, person in my district about actually using uh, the GPR to, if during downtime, to essentially look for potential lost individuals. Like as part of the search, it wouldn't be rescue, but part of the search uh, at that point uh, for lost uh, remains, basically. Um, under her current guidance, She's not necessarily able to do that, so I don't know if this body can consider changing it or what. And I was looking for advice from her about is it an administrative policy or is it a legislative body that we could or <coughs> could not use that. This special project, <coughs> excuse me, falls along the same lines as the cemetery project. You have um, probably more approval over things, and we do the work um, to see that those. Uh, projects get the things done that need to be done, the write-ups, the follow-up, and all of that documentation. So um, part of it, yes, it's administrative because the legislation that established the Culture Center says that we are a resource to tribal programs uh, and, um, and that we educate the public, um, our, our education pieces to the public, for language, history, and pathways. And, and that's, that's, it's just that broad and that simple. And so that's how um, our current <coughs> programs are. Um, that's how we, we manage them and administer them according to that legislation. Because the 1091 Legislative Act um, established the Cultural Center. So the, and I was looking for some advice from my fellow council members. So I think these people were trained in the GPR, and I didn't know if we could. They're asking for a loan of the equipment. So I didn't know. But are, I have, I would have a question. Are they trained to use the equipment that we have and the software that we utilize? Because our staff are trained in it. And since they didn't ask what software we were using, I wouldn't know if they were or not because they didn't mention the specific software. So there are all kinds of software out there. And you would have to, to use our equipment with uh, what we have now. We have certain software on it that uh, the Cherokee Nation staff, and I can't even say my staff because it's a collaborative program between community services, realty, and myself. I, don't, I actually don't have any staff who do the work. Those other departments or, or groups 
their staff do the work. So I guess, in, and I don't know how to even pose this question, but would this be an issue if it's during downtime where that equipment's not being used for that equipment to be used for something like that? If it's something I could negotiate with Chief Smith. <coughs> Mr. Baker? I'm assuming that if we're cross deputized, <coughs> it would kind of be a Cherokee Nation program. I mean, if we get with that body we have across the organization. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hoskins? I just wondered, the, the law enforcement agency, is it that if it's something that can be loaned for free, it's a benefit to them, but if there's any fee associated with it, they may as well just go out <coughs> to some other place, or is it reasonable to, and even practical to assess the fee uh, for the use of this equipment for the law enforcement agency? And I guess I'd pose it first to Council Member. Thank you. May I? Um, I think, for me, that question, I think, goes back to what Councilman Maker said, is we're cross-deputized with the Rogers County Sheriff mm -hmm. Office, which was essentially who was asking. And so I would think it would be to our benefit under that partnership that assuming there's a, you know, liability clause that if they do something with it that they would replace it possibly or something that it would be no cost to them if it's during our downtime and we don't need it. Thank you. Mr. Well, while we're thinking about this, we probably need to put some something regarding who would do repair, upkeep, if something should happen to the equipment. I would, I would assume you would have because normally uh, for them to have um, access to other equipment from other entities, mm -hmm. I know it, uh, it can cost you up to $800 a day. So it is quite a stiff fee for them to pay. Are there other comments or advice? Thank you. So, Madam Chairman, for the record, it doesn't sound like there's any opposition to, for me to uh, formally request this from the chief for the use of the equipment so that Gloria has, or Dr. Sly has authorization, so to speak, mm -hmm. I guess. So I appreciate everyone's time. Any other questions? Okay. Okay, good. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Sly. We move on to old business, there is none. We move on to new business, there is none. So, does anyone have any announcements before we adjourn today? Move for adjournment. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Much more. Much more.